Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Romance. Romance, bringing you the finest stories of the world's greatest romantic authors. Stories of the courage, the devotion, the adventure of love. All strung on the bright thread of romance. Tonight, the makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you the story of Prince Rudolph of Austria and his tragic love for Maria Vetsera. The story of Miley. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, here is the first act of... The story of Myerling. Rudolph, please. Don't do this thing. It will only add to the talk. Philip is right. It will make matters worse. Why won't you listen to reason? The Emperor will be bound to hear of it. The man's a member of Parliament. If it must be done, let us do it. I've had enough. Enough of both of you. What the devil does it mean to you? Nothing. Besides, you're afraid of the all highest, my father, the emperor. That's unjust. We're your friends. My friends? And you speak of justice? Where's the justice for this, this mudraker, Graz, who rises from his hallowed chair in Parliament and, carefully mentioning no names, proceeds to dwell upon the vice and corruption in certain high places? Certain high places? Does he think me a fool? Rudolph, Wait! Will you listen? Gratz is a politician who seeks to gain notoriety. He has the ear of the commoners. Philip is right. If you go through with this, it will only lend support to his statements. Don't do it. Let me publish a denunciation in my paper. And you think that will be accepted, Carl? As well as your protest by violence. I hate violence. I'm afraid of it. But I fear moral cowardice even more. The Emperor is much to blame. You yourself have said it was his spy who intercepted your letter to Maria Vetsera. After I have dealt with Graz, I shall have an audience with my royal father. If you have no stomach for this, leave me alone. All right. But promise us one thing. That when it is over, you will go to Meyerling. Tonight. Yes, and that you will stay until it is safe to return. I promise nothing. Is this the house? Yes. Stay here, then. I have no wish to make you suffer for my quarrel. Yes? Just a moment, who? You are Graz. Yes, Your yes, Highness. You are also a dirty swine. Do you know why I'm here? Why, I haven't this. I'm going to whip you. Your Highness, I am in delicate health. When I am finished, you will be in more delicate health. It would be very unwise. Why do you single me out for your scandal monger? Oh, you speak of my words in Parliament. But, Your Highness, I mentioned no name. There was no need to, was there? You had a letter which left no doubt as to the identity of your target. Well, these are your words, Your Highness. If the cap fits... Oh, I... <coughs> Thank you, Your Highness. I shall want satisfaction for that. If I thought that killing you could serve any purpose, I should have done it now. You are like a mongrel who yaps once too often. And, Grotz, I swear that if there is to be a next time, I shall beat you until you howl. Your Highness. Yes? Will you present my condolences to your wife, the Princess Stephanie? And my congratulations to Maria the Terra. Your <coughs> I 
shouldn't have done it, Maria. It was a coward's blow. I was the crown prince striking a commoner who for his life dared not strike back. But he will forgive you? No. No, he asked for a duel. Oh, you can't. If you mean that I should be afraid and can't, you know me too well. But since I am the emperor's son, I shall have to face him. My Rudy, why do you always think of yourself as a coward? Because I am, and always have been. Were I not, I wouldn't have accepted my father's choice for a wife. A wife who lives in a palace three miles removed from my own. Does Stephanie know about the letter? She must. Maria, you... You make it sound as vicious as Grotz and the others. Oh, you shouldn't have written to me again. No, come here tonight. Why shouldn't I? I love you, Maria. Because my father finds it expedient for me to marry the princess of another nation. So the contract is sure happiness. Stephanie and I have never loved. I am not a nation. I'm a man. Rudy, what did you say in the letter? It wasn't a long letter. I said that that I couldn't stop loving you, that I didn't want to. Oh, Rudy, why can't you stop? I see only this. I must get a divorce from Stephanie. You and I will oh, marry him. No, that letter which fell into the hands of Graz is only the beginning. The emperor would never allow a divorce. And if we continue to see each other, we'll be no better than that which we're accused of now. And yet if this... if this were an idle flirtation that... An affair of no consequence. There would be no accusation. The custom of the court is to allow every excess but that of the heart. So it's not enough for me. Maria, I love you. I shall not give you up. My dearest, what shall I say? I'm trying to be wise for both of us. From the day that we met, I've dreamed of something that I knew could never happen. For us. Marriage. Children. Happy. Maria. Oh, yes, I love you. Yes, I shall not stop giving you. Yes to all these, because I'm frightened. Frightened at the thought of my life without you. <laughs> Good boy. Rudolph, I thought you would never lose. What, from an early morning ride? Nonsense. Here, groom, take the horse. Oh, what is it, Philip? You troubled? Your man, Loshek, has been looking for you. Oh? The Emperor requests an audience. The Emperor requests? Come now. He, he knows about last night. I doubted that it would be kept a secret. And this note was delivered to me an hour ago. From Graf. He looks upon me as your second... A duel? Yes. And if I know the man, he's sent a copy to the Emperor. Oh, Rudolph, don't you see? You have played into his hands. Perhaps. And it doesn't really matter. Grotz is of no importance now. Nor the Emperor, not even Austria. Rudolph. I own to the heart of a commoner. And as such, have made my choice. I'm going to marry Maria Vetera. <laughs> I am glad that you brought this up, my son. It has worried me. If your majesty will discontinue that tone of paternal solicitude, it will make our discussion easier. And I find your tone insulting. Later you may come to me to find forgiveness. Will you understand that I'm no longer a child? What I did to Graz last night, what I feel for Maria Vetsera, these are my own accomplishments. They are not dictated by a tutor to an obedient pupil. I am of age, Your Majesty. I find that hard to believe, my son. Last night, you take a whip to a member of Parliament. Following that, you pay a clandestine visit to the ladies' room. Your spies keep you well informed. This matter of grass will be disposed of. There will be no duel, of course. But, Maria Vetsera, here I see that I must exercise my royal command. It is forbidden, Rudolph, that you see her again. If I refuse to follow your command... I shall put a guard about her house. You will find no entrance. 
I wish to obtain a divorce from Stephanie. And I wish to marry Maria. We have been through this before. No. Your Majesty is aware there is no affection between Stephanie and myself. There is no need for it. The princess is an admirable woman. When you become emperor, she will be a most suitable queen. Which brings me to another point. I desire that you have children, heirs to the throne. You desire? Rudolph, you were born to be a king. The office was not lent to you. It is not to be returned at every whim. If you must adore this Maria Vestella, then do so. But be circumspect. We can humor such intrigues. I have no quarrel with flirtation. It is your passion which I forbid. Is it so impossible for you to see as a father that my ways are not the ways of your court? I don't want your throne. Grant me a divorce from Stephanie. Let me marry Maria. No. You think me hot. When you are older, you will know that I was right. You are not to see her again. That is my word. I shall not obey it. You will do as you're told. Now, leave me. Was it very bad? No. No, Philip. It was very good. The emperor has taught me... What it is to rule with a firm hand. I'm no longer afraid of his dictates. At what time does Gratz require the duel? At seven this evening, but you won't... It is against the Emperor's wishes, therefore I shall. Will you... Will you act as my second? Of course. You are enough that I can trust. Good to know you stand beside me. Philip... I want you to go to Maria Vetsera. Tell her to be ready to leave Vienna tonight. Leave? But where can you go? Away from kings and courts. What about Carl and me? You wish to join me? No. If you will have it. You may never see Austria again. Without you here, there would be little enough that I should care to see of it. Very well. I rely upon you to take my message to Maria. And Philip? Yes. Choose my pistol well for the duel. I have no taste for killing, but I have even less for being killed. Make every day more enjoyable. Treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift. Helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. And now for the second act of The Story of Myerling as we return to Romance. Well, Your Highness, it is apparent that your second have no inclination to witness the duel. For reasons of their own, they are delayed. However, I see no reason to postpone the affair longer. Your Highness, if you desire, and if Herr Graz permits, I should be honored to stand for you. Thank you, no. I require no second. Very well. Your choice of pistol, gentlemen. You are familiar with the rules governing the duel? Then, gentlemen, when I give the word, 20 paces. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Honor. To whom I have killed a man. Rudolph! Huh? You must sleep here immediately. Our uh, carriage was stopped by the Emperor's guards. His Majesty learned that you had set out for the duel. Did you take my message to Maria? Yes. Now hurry. I will explain all to you in the carriage. There will be the devil to pay. Have you told Carl of our plans? Yes, he is with us. Good. Where do we meet? At my alley. You and Maria of the Terror will journey there in this carriage. It has been arranged. I shall travel with you. Carl will meet us there. For my part, I have no desire to stop until we cross the border. There's no alternative. You must have money and clothing. Carl will see to that. Now that His Majesty has been apprised of the duel, which was contrary to his command, you dare not return to the palace. How well he knows my every move and action. Is it in the divinity of things to pluck the thoughts from our brains? There is nothing mystic in this Rudolph. His Majesty trusts no one. His spies are behind every pillar in every chamber of the palace. So how he learned of our complicity in the duel, I swear I cannot tell. Where is Carl? Concluding his affairs at home and the business of the newspaper. These are heavy sacrifices that you make for me, you and Carl. I can offer you nothing but exile. And we would have it no other way. Perhaps Spain, England. No, check. stop the carriage. Uh, uh, what? Uh, you know. What is it? There. In front of Maria's house. Guards. The Emperor's guard. He said that. I shall put a guard about her house. You will find no entrance. Well, they were not there when I saw her two hours ago. Have you a pistol? Yes. Oshik, no, remain Highness. here. If we do not return in ten minutes, leave this place. Forget that you ought to draw us here. Very well, Your Highness. But if you need my help... Thanks, me. but you are the means of escape. Stay. There are three of them in front of the house. We shall scale the wall and attack from the rear. Now, give me a hand. All right. Uh, all right. Yep. Now jump down quietly. Wait. in the shadow. He will pass us. Stop crying, you're dead. I have killed once tonight and I'm yet infected. Philip? Yes? Bind and gag him well. You're going to wait me here. Yes. Be careful. Shall not see either again. Attend to the horses, Loshek. And as soon as Herr Karl Bohm arrives, we shall go on. Very good, yes, I mean. Welcome to to my island, my own been in my dreams that someday you and I could spend our happiness here together. But at least you can say to your grandchildren that you saw the Royal Lodge. Not because it is royal, but because here the man I loved spent his childhood. Oh, Rudy, how jealous I am of the years past. Just think only of those to come. Rudolph, I'm going to see the provisions for the remainder of our journey. We may not find it expedient to stop again. Thank you, Philip. 
Night has a chill. Marie and I will build a fire inside. Call us the moment Carl arrives. I shall. Good. I'm suddenly afraid. Of what? This place. This mine. It's cold and fresh. No. No, you're tired. I have to sleep before we go Thank on. Thank you. Oh, dear. Now it's all right. Hmm. I'm safe here. I could not live any longer without you. Let us go inside. Be here soon? Yes. Perhaps he'll not come. We'll wait for him forever. Few by the fire. Quiet shadows flicker close together. Hmm. Would you mind that very much? No. You would. Darling? Are people in love always like this? Everywhere. I think so. So much in love that no matter what fears and cares lie beyond their embrace, they cannot touch them. Perhaps. And when the embrace is ended, and the lovers are apart, is it still the same? We shall never know that. Because we shall never be parted. Oh. <laughs> Rudy, you have a beautiful face. My face? Beautiful? <laughs> I'm unshaven since this morning. But if you will continue to think me beautiful, why, I shall never shave. <laughs> and we must always remain in this light. I would kiss you, Dick. I would have you do so. I love you, Rudy. What color are your eyes? You do not know in these speak of love. They're so changeable. One moment green, then gray. Do they indeed change? Always. Then you must be serious. This is a serious matter. Why? Because I'm finding something to talk about now. So that I can enjoy the pain of waiting. Waiting until I kiss you once more. Talked and waited too long. Ah. Come in. Rudolph. They're here. They are? The Emperor. He's gone. Oh, you lied. It couldn't be. They didn't know. Oh, dare I tell you. Tell me what? What have you to tell me? Carl. Carl Bohmbrotten. Carl. He's in the employ of His Majesty. It was he who divulged all of our plans. Carl. Oh, no, no. I can't believe it's that. It's outside with the Emperor. They took me by surprise. Escape? No, no. The guards are all about the place. Oh. Carl. He was my friend. Oh. Rudolph. The Emperor awaits you. Oh, I shall come in a moment. Wait for me outside, Philip. The embrace is ended, Rudy. The lovers are apart. They'll send you away. I shall not see you again. I love you very much, Rudy. And now... I do not want to live without you. Oh. Your eyes are gray. How oh, lovely. Maria, if we could stay here by the dying fire, the shadows, in each other's arms forever. Yes. We would tell each other of our love, our childhood, live each day we have spent together and those that lie before us. I 
wait no longer. Your Majesty, give them what they ask. It is so little. The crown prince returns to Vienna. The woman, Maria Vetera, will leave the country. For your part in this design, because of your royal blood, punishment will be less severe. Now instruct Rudolph that I wish him to come to me. Your Majesty, I am not one of your paid spies. With your permission, I shall take leave of your prison. I do not give you leave. Then, without it, sir. Now, as his father, I must bring him out myself. Rudolph, it is your father. Rudolph, it is the Emperor. I command that you open the door. Rudolph. Rudolph. My son. Maria, that Terra and I are remaining here. Her Majesty. You see, we, we are very much in love. We... Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some helpful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Romance is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and brings you the greatest love stories of today and yesterday. Tonight you have heard the story of Myerling, dramatized for radio by Anthony Ellis and starring Peggy Weber and Larry Dobkin. Editorial supervision is by John Meston and musical supervision by Alexander Courage. Next week, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum, the chewing treat enjoyed by millions, will bring you another story enjoyed by millions. F. Scott Fitzgerald's charming romance, The Offshore Pirate. Be sure to listen to Romance next week when the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you The Offshore Pirate. This is Bob Stevenson speaking, and this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.